All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming severe weather season this spring. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. And I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. And then also our very awesome channel membership next to that subscribe button. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think this upcoming severe weather season is going to go? Will there be more, less? What do you think is going to happen? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, first things first, we're taking a look at our sea surface temperature anomaly, because it's very crucial for the severe weather. Uh, there's a very strong correlation when you're in a La Nina, there's typically a lot more severe weather. And when you're in an El Nino, there's typically just not as much. We are in a La Nina, so that's one key factor that's telling me uh, we will likely be dealing with more of that severe weather. And also, if you take a look at the Gulf of Mexico, you can see we have warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. That's another thing that leads me to believe we could have some above average severe weather, especially near those Gulf states as well. So that's two very big factors already right out of the gates. All right, now let's take a look at that Jamstech model. This is their temperature forecast for March, April, May timeframe, a three month time frame here for the air temperature. And take a look at all those warm temperatures down there for the south of the United States. And then there's some colder than normal conditions up there for the Northwest. Uh, so that's gonna be a, contributing factor moving forward when we see those above normal temperatures in the south uh, that just adds to an even more extreme differential between those cold fronts coming down from the north and the warmer air setting up over the southern United States we will talk a little bit more about that later on and I'll explain that because it's probably very confusing so in a moment we're going to move on we're going to take a look at some more things on the jams tech uh, and then we're going to start talking about some of my thoughts on this upcoming spring and then even how those temperatures are going to affect this upcoming severe weather season. All of that is coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at the precipitation forecast here from the Jamstack. Uh, and the interesting thing here is it's calling for drier than normal conditions down there for the southeast, the south central, uh, but with some more wet conditions there for a lot of the Ohio Valley. It's really hard to see because you have to look at like, uh, you know, world map here. You can't really zoom in on here on the Jamstack. Let's take a look at those sea surface temperature forecasts though. Uh, and as you can see, we're expected to still be in a La Nina. And even when we look at this chart actually here, our Nino 3.4 index, which is how they measure the El Nino or La Nina, we are expected to cross over into a neutral or El Nino eventually by the time we're reaching maybe June or July. Uh, but as far as March, April, May goes, uh, we're gonna be in a La Nina heading towards an El Nino, which is going to be enough to give us more of an a La Nina effect. Typically, there's a lag there. So even if we head into an El Nino, there's going to be a two or three month lag before we start feeling the uh, ends of the effects of the La Nina. So it's a very interesting, you know, how that works, but that is typically how things would go. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about a little bit more about how an El Nino would affect the severe weather and then also how La Nina would affect the severe weather because I've mentioned how there's big differences there. And then we're going to take a look at some of my hand-drawn maps I've made actually for this video in just a moment. Now here we are talking about really the El Nino influence and the La Nina influence here on hail and tornadoes, which is two-thirds of our severe weather. There's only damaging winds that comes after that. Uh, but really, for the most part, you can tell that in an El Nino, we see below average a lot or less frequent tornado and hail, especially for that south central United States, the typical tornado alley. But in a La Nina, indicated by those blues, we see the above average or more frequent tornadoes and hail, especially hail there in a La Nina. And it's not even actually like a slight anomaly there. That is actually a very strong correlation. Uh, when you take a look at the, you know, the all of our analogs we have throughout the recorded history and everything, this is actually a very strong contributing factor that La Nina and El Nino uh, towards the severe weather, just as it is for the hurricanes. In a La Nina, you expect a lot more hurricanes, and in an El Nino, you expect less in general. So there is, you know, these major effects that El Nino and La Nina has on our, obviously, our climate. Now let's just take a look at my hand-drawn map here and what I want to talk about is how a normal spring would go and how this causes severe weather events to occur because we all know that springtime brings severe weather especially in the United States um, and 
it's due to the colder air to the north. That's winter still trying to stick around for the northern United States. Spring comes a lot later for the northern United States. We know this. So there's frequent cold fronts coming through. But also to the south, spring has arrived. And that warmer air is really setting in over this region. But there's still cold fronts coming through. So it's that cold air heading into very warm air that causes the severe weather to happen. I think that's a pretty common knowledge there. Uh, and in you know March, we're taking a look at a much further south. Uh, with that happening because we see some of that warmer air making its way into the extreme south but then in april the warmer air has made its way a little bit further north and then may even further north so we see this creep north as the spring moves along typically typically but what i expect to occur is above average temperatures to the south and below average temperatures to the north so what this does is it actually just makes that normal effect even more extreme because we're taking a look at even more cold air to the north and even more warm air to the south and this causes even more severe weather in the middle as you can see severe weather outbreaks are even more common in setups like this especially when combined with that la nina all right now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at some modeled guidance as far as what how this spring could go uh, as far as temperatures now that we know what causes that severe weather to occur even more frequently and we're, we'll even take a look at the precipitation forecast as well All right, now here we are taking a look at that CFS model. And we can take this one month by month, actually. So here's the month of March. As you can see, we expect above normal temperatures for the southeast and a lot of the east in general with some colder air out west. I think that this could lead to some severe weather to occur there, uh, especially Oklahoma, Arkansas, as some colder air might make its way a little bit further east from time to time, uh, maybe even Texas and Louisiana. But I think this will be a little bit more of a west-based severe weather setup for the month of March, just based off of this temperature anomaly uh, forecast by a model. So take this with a grain of salt. It is just a model outlook. Uh, and then as we take a look at that precipitation, you can see that there will be near normal precipitation for that area as well. Also, the southeast having some of that above average precipitation could lead to some more severe weather for those regions. It's once we reach April that things get very interesting here. So we still see that cold air out west, but the southeast and the south central United States, it's very clear that there's a warm air bubble setting up around this region. And then we have near normal or below normal temperatures to the north of there. That will be in the form of some frequent cold fronts coming through to meet that warm air that's setting up over the south. And that would cause severe weather outbreaks for the month of April, which is very common occurrence. We do see severe weather outbreaks almost every single year. Uh, but this is a pattern that you, you know, really, really is favorable for that, especially once we take a look at these temperature anomalies. Check this out above normal temperatures, basically for all of our tornado alley. All of the areas that typically expect severe weather uh, are seeing above normal precipitation, according to our CFS, CFS model there. And then for the month of May, what this model calls for is below normal temperatures to set up over the north central United States, even the Ohio Valley in the northeast with near normal or slightly below normal temperatures for the southeast and the south central United States. In a pattern like this, let's say the southeast and the south central are actually very cold compared to normal, we would have less severe weather than typical, I would say. But if we see this same pattern, but it's actually a little bit warmer for the southeast and the south central United States, I think we will have above average severe weather in this pattern. Now, once we take a look at the precipitation forecast here, you can see that in Nebraska, Kansas... Um, Oklahoma, Texas, all dealing with some above normal precipitation. Obviously, this is pretty far out for a model like this. So we're going to take this one with a grain of salt. But if a pattern like this was to occur, we would be dealing with, you know, pretty decent amounts of severe weather, I would say, for South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, which in May is actually the very typical region that sees that. Uh, slowly but surely over the entire spring, likely severe weather will make its way further north and further west. As that springtime progresses, we see that very commonly. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the forecast for March, April through May. So the entire spring for the precipitation and the temperatures. And then we're going to take a look at my severe weather forecast for this spring. Now, one thing I wanted to mention before I get into this, I'm going to be releasing my official spring forecast within the next two weeks. So be on the lookout for that. I'm very excited to release my spring 2021 forecast. Um, I know I didn't make any of these. Usually I make like three or four forecasts for each season because I do one per month leading up to the actual season. Uh, but I just decided not to do that because this winter has been so active. There was never a day where I was like, I have nothing to make a video about until now we're starting to get into a slower pattern now. 
Um, but going forward, as we move into the summer, fall, and winter, I'm going to be actually releasing three or four of those outlooks individually. Not like I did with the spring one, but we will be releasing multiple of each one for you guys. All right, so here's the March, April, May forecast according to our CFS model. And you can see there is a bit of that cold to the north and warm to the south pattern setting up here overall for the entire spring which is a concerning look. And once we look at that precipitation forecast, it's even more concerning as we're taking a look at above average precipitation for basically the entire tornado alley. This is not good by any means. And I think we do have an active severe weather pattern, uh, you know, moving forward towards the spring overall. Here's my spring forecast for the severe weather. And this is one that I made a, a couple months ago or maybe a month ago. Um, and I'm going to be updating this as we move towards our spring forecast in the coming weeks. But for now, this was my most recently updated uh, severe weather forecast. And I do expect above average severe weather, especially in those more traditional tornado alleys, which is the more western based one. You know, 20, 30 years ago, this is where we saw like all of the tornadoes. But recently in the past 20 years or so, we've seen that move slowly but surely towards the east towards where now most of the time most of our tornado outbreaks take place for louisiana through mississippi alabama and maybe georgia and tennessee and arkansas uh, but whereas it used to be mostly for texas oklahoma and kansas i think we're gonna have a little bit more of a traditional you know severe weather season this year but i do expect a lot of severe weather for those southeast regions as well the dixie alley for my confidence tab, I'm at about a four out of six for this one. This is obviously a seasonal forecast, so we're not going to be super high on the confidence regardless. Uh, but I'm at about, I would say, 55% confident in this. Uh, there's ult ultimately some factors that you can't really see. Sometimes, sometimes you make a seasonal forecast and everything is pointing towards one thing and it just does not play out that way. And that could be the case this time, and I certainly hope it is because I don't want severe weather to occur, obviously. So... We're going to watch this as it unfolds over the coming months, and I hope you stay tuned with us uh, as we watch each individual severe weather event, as we forecast for each month what the severe weather could look like. Uh, we're going to be here, and I hope you guys will as well. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think this next potentially major winter storm will be major? And James Marr said, I don't think it will be major snowstorm, uh, but it will be sizable. And that's how I'm feeling as of this morning. The models really backed off of that snowstorm I talked about yesterday. And that's why I didn't even talk about it today, uh, because they've significantly just backed off of that snowstorm ultimately, uh, as we had low confidence in that one either way. Uh, but it really just did not unfold like a major snowstorm. So I don't think that will be a major snowstorm at all. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. Sebastian Tao, John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Balamo, Adam S., Larry LaPan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's J, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary's, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of our patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.